I would like to go over how to work with PHP files that are installed on the Apache web server using the XAMPP application. I am using a 2019 Windows 10 operating system, so your computer screens may look a bit different. XAMPP is installed on the C drive. You will navigate to XAMPP. All files will be stored in the htdocs folder. That is the root of your web server. If you notice, there is a default index.php file sitting in the root. Therefore, when I launch localhost, that index.php file will execute. So here you see I have launched localhost in my browser, and I see a web page which talks about the XAMPP application. Notice it has actually redirected us into another folder. If I were to look at that file in an editor, you can see where it is taking you to a different location in order to load that file. The point I want to make is that is inconvenient for testing. Therefore, you want to rename this file. I have renamed it to index underscore original dot PHP. Therefore, when I type in localhost, I will be able to see the files that I would like to access. The files from the book are stored in this folder. When you click on the folder name, every chapter is listed and therefore we can look at the sample code for every chapter. Now when I type in localhost, I can see my files. This is a much easier method. Now when I click on the folder for the book files, I can see all the different chapters. So now I can execute these files. However, executing these files doesn't really help me. It just shows me the output. If I were to right click and look at the source code, all I see is the HTML. I cannot see the PHP. You will never see PHP in the browser. So how do I learn what these files are doing? I am going to right click on the folder and open it as a brackets project. This is the code editor I am using. I can see all of the files. If I click on the first one, I can see the PHP code. I cannot test the PHP code from my code editor because I need to run the file from the web server, which is localhost. Therefore, I go back to localhost and I click on the file to run it. Let's look at another file, phpinfo.php. Notice that the author is not creating an official HTML document. He's just executing this function. This is fine for learning. For learning, you do not really need the doc type, the head section, and the body. However, if you are creating documents in a website and for the assignment, they should and will be correct HTML documents. So if I want to see the output of this code, I need to execute that file using localhost. So I go back to localhost, I click on the file, and here we see it gives us a lot of information about our configuration. So in addition to looking at the files to understand how the PHP code is being executed and to understand the syntax, you might want to edit that code, or you might want to actually write your own files. So here I have a test.php in my O1 folder. And notice I do have a correct HTML5 document here. And I am just learning how to output Hello World to the browser. And then I go back to localhost to test it. Remember that your files need to be stored in htdocs in order to be executed on the web server. So here we see the output of my Hello World. Again, if I right click and look at the source code, I see the output of the PHP code inside my HTML document. I do not and will never see the PHP code. 
You can navigate up and down in this directory listing. So if I go up, here's all my different chapters. This is what you wanna do each week. You wanna study the code and see how it works, add your own code so that you can learn how to use and how to write PHP. Remember, you need to have several screens open. You need to have localhost in the browser open. You might need to have your file manager open to make sure that your files are being placed in the right folders. And you need to have your editor open to look at the code and to create the code. So you are jumping back and forth between a couple windows in order to test your PHP code.